Great interest rates with no principal payments until January 2022. Share the gift of love. Make it a merrier Christmas with the communal. Exciting prices for members throughout the promotion. For we are your Santa this Christmas. Offer ends January 31st, 2022. Lending terms and conditions apply. Communal show with Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store now has amazing deals, special discounted prices on wedding sets, watches and selected jewelry. We sell top brand jewelry and watches like Citizen, Guess and Klein and G-Shock all at the best prices in Grenada. We also buy scrap gold and offer the best deals and customer service on the island. Opening hours Mondays to Saturdays 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store. Located at the Esplanade Mall, St. George's, Grenada. Visit our brand new remodeled store or call us on telephone number 414-3114-232-1234 or WhatsApp 533-1581. Sale is on for a limited time only. only. Running low on groceries? Why not visit realvalueiga.com and experience our new online shopping platform. Place your order, then go out and enjoy your day to spend more time with friends and family. Free delivery available within select locations or in-store pickup available. Sounds simple, right? It is. Stress less? Live more with Real Value IGA Online Store, where good food begins. delicious and packed with vitamins that could only be one thing it's a rica almond beverage great on its own or a lovely addition to smoothies so call superb distributors on 435-2948 or visit us at tempe st george's today remember rica is life and life is rica Welcome, welcome one and all to another Mikey Live program. Mikey Hutchinson is the name. And of course, this is where it all happens. We're talking about the good, the bad, and the Mikey. Everything that you want to know what's taking place in Grenada. Basically, you get here. It's here, you gain it. We got the good, the bad, and the everything. You know what I mean? And we do not have a horse in the race, so we have to tell you as it is, right? So, welcome again. And of course, we have a few things to uh, talk to you about on today's program. All right. So what are we going to be discussing tonight? This is news discussed, not told. According to the health minister, Grenada has enough vaccines all right, for everyone over the, above the age of 12. Grenadian minister tests positive for COVID-19. That's Delmar Thomas. And the government engages media houses to assist in COVID-19 fight. And... Uh, discussions about uh, Carnival 2022 are ongoing, says the prime minister. The state funeral of uh, former governor general Sir Carlisle Glynn will take place on January 18th. And as well, the PM says that, well, he's not willing to shortlist names to take over party leadership. All right? And Omicron is dangerous, especially for the unvaccinated, says the World Health Organization. So family, uh, these are your headlines. Uh, we're taking a break and come back. We want to remind you that the headlines was brought to you through the kind compliments of Courts Grenada Limited, Digicel, Nawasa, the Housing Authority of Grenada, Real Value, IGA, Supermarket, 
and as well superb distributors folks when we come back you're gonna be real news in all your little, little, little. so brace up we're coming back remember someone sharing tonight's program will receive some free credit compliments did you sell the housing authority offers products that people can choose from products that people can access and i think anyone looking to build just call the housing authority of grenada the service was um, superb Every step of the way, they collaborated with the owner, they collaborated with the builder. The builder himself was really good. For what I've seen them do, I have to say that from buildings they have done in the past to where they are now, they have come up to speed with modern trends, modern designs, and I think I will advise anybody to choose the Housing Authority of Grenada. Well, that was easy. Getting what you want now. At Quartz, you can find appliances, electronics, and furniture that you need at the unbeatable prices. Save up to 20% off the essentials. Get it now with Ready Finance and get two months free. Only at Quartz. Bringing value home. Special conditions apply. Promotion runs till January 31st, 2022. We enjoy the luxury of a quality water supply. But it can come to this. Have adequate storage. And uh, that too is important, having adequate storage. All right. So, folks, again, welcome. Let me invite the people on WhatsApp. You know, all the people on WhatsApp, they just come in. You know what I mean? Yeah, boy, they just want to make sure I send them the, the business. All right. So, again, um, we would like to officially welcome every one of you to another um, Mikey Live program. All right. So, let's get straight into the business. Now, the first thing. Um, that we want to tell you the young lady that was missing yesterday, but we have not received um, any update about her. So for now, we will take for granted um, that she's still missing until otherwise told. And so that's why we like to, uh, to let the authorities know that it is very important that when these individuals are found, that you, you, you at least let us know as soon as possible so that we can also share that and that um, we, we wouldn't have the... Um, the general public still looking, all right, still looking out. And I'm saying this to say that um, I think that's, that's enough reasons for you to continue searching because, like I said, we have not had any update for that on um, this young lady who's gone missing for, for just too many days now, you know. Usually once they hear the name on Mikey Live, you know, they show up, yeah. And so we did not receive an update, so we have to do it again to let you know that... Um, this young lady has has been missing according to police and they would like your assistance in locating her all right her name is Trisha uh, pictures on your screen so at least you have an idea of what she looks like okay um, she's only 16 years old and she's a student of Bonaire in St. Mark according to police she left her home on Saturday 8th January uh, about 7 p.m. and has not returned since. She was last seen wearing a black and white dress and she's about five feet in height, slim built and brown in complexion. So again, anyone seeing her or have any information about her whereabouts, you are asked to please contact telephone 405-5324, that's the Community Relations Department, also Victoria Police Station 444-8424, or you can simply call the emergency hotline 911. All right. Uh, or you can call 444-1958. All right. The, the, the family would really appreciate your intervention in this. They would really appreciate your help. All right. Good. All right. So the next thing that we have to tell you about, boy, all right, let me just um, organize that picture there. Second thing. 329 um, new cases of uh, COVID-19 that was reported last night, boy. Yeah? Um, the dashboard came in just after we left the program. You know, so we had to call them and say, listen, make sure all of us are not business before 10 o'clock. Yeah, I mean, but now we have to understand too, um, it's a lot of work uh, for the individuals. And sometimes after a full day of working, these individuals have to still go back and uh, prepare the dashboard. Yeah, so it's a lot of work. So 300 
and 29 more cases have been identified. All right, that brings a uh, total <coughs> number of active cases to 2,551. I had no clue that it was going to get to that, that, get that high. Active cases, you know. And if <coughs> the science is right that one person may affect between three to five individuals, you see where we're going with this. And if the science is right that it's more transmissive than, than, than the other variants that we've had, So you have to do what you have to do with regards to, um, you know, following the protocols and all of that. Yes? Right. Now, um, there were uh, 1,230 tests that were conducted yesterday. So that falls within the range of um, this, the day before when we had, um, when we had what, uh, how many cases we had? 501? Right. So the day when we had 501 in terms of the test positivity, it's, it's on par with that day. Yeah, so situation hasn't gotten better even if the number is lower. It's lower because the less people tested. Yeah? Good. Uh, so um, we have to continue following the protocols and try to not become victims of the COVID-19. So the Minister for Health is issuing a caution or a word of warning, if we may call it that, um, to individuals who have uh, these non-communicable diseases like hypertension, diabetes, and, 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 the, and the likes. But the, what the health minister is saying that uh, people who are suffering from these are more likely uh, to be hospitalized from COVID-19, even with that, with that weaker strain of the virus, the Omicron. And then there's so many people here in Grenada and elsewhere that are ending up in hospital not vaccinated. And we can read the list of individuals who are in hospital, hypertension, diabetes, and asthma. Please, if you have any of those, sugar, pressure, asthma, you most definitely need to be vaccinated. Definitely, do not let anyone tell you that those are reasons not to be vaccinated. Those are reasons that you will end up in hospital if you get COVID-19 without being vaccinated. You need to arm yourself as much as possible. That's uh, Health yeah, Minister never... Nicholas Steele um, advising that persons with these comorbidities, as they call it, should um, get vaccinated rather than use it as an excuse for not uh, being vaccinated. All right. According to the minister, um, uh, Grenada has enough vaccines available for anyone above the age of 12 who wants to be vaccinated. He says that while we have many options to choose from, there are countries, bigger countries around the world that do not have the privilege that we do in terms of uh, uh, vaccine availability. We are in a very fortunate position here in Grenada and we have worked hard as a ministry and government to get to this position where we have vaccines available for anyone above the age of 12. In the UK up until Christmas, 12 and over could not get their second dose. Many 12 and over could not get their second dose because it was scheduled and because of shortage of supplies. In Grenada, we have enough vaccines right now for anyone 12 and over who would like to be vaccinated. We are looking forward within the next month to possibly have doses for 5 to 11 of the Pfizer. We have already sourced and are procuring and will announce as soon as we have those. I look forward to individuals who have children 5 to 11 coming forward to be vaccinated once those vaccines are available, readily available. We have ordered thousands. Once they are here, we will make those announcements. In the meantime, it is our responsibility, those of us who can be vaccinated, to come forward and receive our vaccine and our booster. Uh, we need to give our children the best weapons to fight this disease. We need to ensure that our children get back to school as quickly as possible with as little risk as possible. And that is by ensuring that our children and our teachers and support staff are vaccinated 
so that we can continue life with a disease, disease that is, is becoming, becoming endemic. endemic. Thank you very much, Minister. Canada's Social Development Minister Delma Thomas has tested positive for the coronavirus, even as the island reported that several people diagnosed with the virus are under the age of 18. Canada has recorded 8,601 positive cases of the virus and 201 deaths since March of 2020. And the health authorities said that there are 2,286 active cases. No, um, well, there, there was an update to, to this, to this, to this. Uh, to this figure right here, right? Um, Delma Thomas announced on her Facebook page last night that she contracted the virus from her husband, who was the one setting all the rules in the house about, uh, um, you know, all the precautionary measures that should be taken. Well, you know what? Ish happens, <laughs> if you ask me. All right, this is the only government minister so far that we know have contracted COVID-19. We are moving on. The government said that they have engaged the media entities around uh, across Grenada um, to assist in the fight against COVID-19. That announcement was made by the Prime Minister at this morning's um, um, press conference with selected members of the media. We initiated together with the Ministry of Health and of course the media houses uh, a discussion session a few days ago where we looked at how we can work together to ensure that we can affect the positive um, situation in our country um, relative to the impact of the virus on, on the citizens of our land. And I must say it was a very important meeting and uh, I, I, I just want again to compliment the older media houses who found the time to be there to participate in that event. Thank you, um, Prime Minister. And uh, the Prime Minister also discussed uh, the whole issue about uh, Carnival 2022. Now, over the weekend, there was a stakeholder meeting that was held. According to the Prime Minister, they are um, looking into the possibilities of having a limited format, uh, uh, a limited form of activities um in august but um all of that is still um with a big question mark not on this, not knowing really how um grenada will be doing then it says if the outside of this current spike if the trend starts to hit downward then we can start thinking about having some form of celebration some form of skilled down celebration no the, the august, august celebration of the national activity might, might be different. We have to be, discussions have already started with stakeholders. And if the trend continues and we have less and less hospitalization and infection, if that trend um, continues, if it peaks and start going down, then we could look at a limited form of activity. But I doubt without having to be able to project what will happen in August, that you will see the carnival celebration as it normally has been um, uh, by, by August this year. Because I already said at the beginning, <laughs> it appears that COVID-19 will be with us for a while. Those of us who thought, like myself, when it started in 2020, March, I said well, I was hoping to look at, hopefully, by the time we're ready to look at the election in 2021, 2022 or 2023, that we, we will not have this virus, but it is going to be there. So we better plan for a national elections on the COVID environment. Similarly, if you're going to have anything like a carnival, plan for carnival on the COVID-19. So it would not be the normal no carnival, carnival, even if we have one. one. So we know that carnival election is going to be after carnival so it's going to be between um august <laughs> it's going to be between august and uh, december of 2022 in my estimation and somebody could record this and maybe show show it when i'm right <laughs> so i'm thinking election is going to be november december of 2022 okay so we are moving oh, man, of course yes it's going to happen around that time why why you feel <laughs> anyway 
Um, the Prime Minister was saying, I don't have that clip now, but it just came to mind that um, many people want him to have the elections, like call it right now, given that there isn't a full complement of candidates and so on to represent the main opposing party, that's the NDC. Man say, he, that's not his style to, to fight when people are the weakest. Yeah, you know, in the sense that he was saying, I say, eh, you know what I mean? But that goes contrary to what we discussed here on the program last night. You know, when the lawyers stayed back last night, lawyers, you understand, when they stayed back last night and we were discussing how to fight, how to win a battle, uh, we didn't know the Prime Minister was going to say that today, but we were telling you how to win a battle, right? But these are two different approaches, I guess, because they are two different kinds of battle. But it's the art of war, <laughs> you know, so the rule is the rule, right? But he says, so in other words, he's taking a more, he's taking a moral approach. According to him, eh? he's taking a moral approach to fighting. Me don't take no moral approach to fighting. And I'm now not talking about the political thing. No, I'm just talking about what we were talking about last night. Because last night we said, in order to win a fight, one, you don't start it the f in the first place. In order to win a fight, you don't start it in the first place. And secondly, you make sure that you're the one to end it when it starts, when somebody starts it. We also said that you don't fight back when somebody's fighting at, against you. You could defend yourself, but don't fight back. Yeah? You only fight back when you are ready to fight back, when you are satisfied that this is the right moment to return the blow. All right? So different philosophies. Same outcome? I don't know. <laughs> anyway. So state funeral for the former governor general, so Kali Glean, and that is to be held on January 18. All right, it's GCMG. He will be afforded a state funeral in keeping with uh, government's policy on state and official funerals. The funeral is scheduled for 1 p.m. on Tuesday, January 18, at the St. Peter's Catholic Church, that's in Gove, St. John. The proceedings will include official tributes by Governor General, Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade and Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell. Um, prior to Tuesday's funeral, the body of Sir Carlisle will lie in state at the Parliament Building, Mount Weldale, from uh, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Monday, January 17. During that period, the public is invited to bid farewell to the former Governor General. All COVID-19 protocols will be enforced for the safety of persons in attendance and government solicits they say the cooperation of the general public and um, in, in this regard. There will be condolence books at the church and uh, parliament building for persons wishing to share their messages with the family. An online condolence book has also been created and can be accessed directly via um, the link mykeeper.com slash uh, profile slash Kalyle Glean. All right. Alternatively, uh, persons can access the book via the GIS Facebook page. As a mark of respect for the late former Governor General, flags will be flown at half mast from sunrise to Sunday, January 16 until sundown on the day of his funeral. The family will host evening prayers followed by tribute on Monday, January 17 at 6 p.m. at the St. Peter's Catholic Church in Gove. The body of the late Sir Carlisle Glynn will be uh, entombed at the Douglaston Cemetery. All events can be viewed live via GIS Facebook platform and as well uh, Mikey Live page, our page, okay? So, in the press conference today, it, the, the, the whole topic of succession planning came up. You know, because to date, Grenada's Prime Minister has not, Dr. Mitchell has not stated who he would like to see as leader of the new National Party, who he would like to see emerge as the new leader of the, the party. He has announced that he, this is going to be his last um, term. You know, he's, after this time, he will not be seeking re-election but fails to say who will be understudying him, who will be um, stepping into his footstep once he makes that transition from leader to a regular um, party member. Well, um, we ask him to be frank about it. And, um, well, he didn't say. 
He did not say who he wanted to be to see as the leader. Well, you asked me, you asked me to be frank. And to me, that question has to be answered by the people of the new national parties, the, the supporters. But I'm asking your opinion, you. No, 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 I'm, I'm saying if I speak to say I want X, it's like I'm the, sort, of, sort of dictating because given my influence on my political organization, it will be very difficult to see the freedom of people to go into an alternative choice. So I, I would not want to do this. I would, I would not tell anyone what I perceive. I have my views. I have seen my colleagues at a different level. In any event, let's accept this. I have said that in the period of the, the new term in government, assuming that we are re-elected, and I feel confident about that re-election, but I, that's the choice of the people. I have said that uh, that would be the period of transition. The process of transitioning leadership is a continuous process. We've been doing that over the years. Who is to say that, that suppose the people decide when the time comes that it's not just persons in government at the time should lead the new national party? It's open to supporters at all levels in the political organization. So that is a point. Of, of, uh, that we have to look at. There's a perception that we must choose somebody from inside a party um, in government at this time. I don't hold that view. And I think members know that I have expressed those views um, consistently. But people are seeing people, individuals, people know individual services over the years, and they have that responsibility to make that choice. And the party will do that. One thing I could promise you, we won't paratroop anybody into the new national party. A uh, person would have to show the metal. They would have to come in and show some consistent of work and evolve through a particular process. That is what I could promise you. If that is being, not being frank, I don't know what else, else to be, be frank. frank. How, How else, else to be, be frank? OK. All right, boss. OK. So we are moving on. How are we looking for time? So, oh yeah, hear the next piece now. Omicron, dangerous, especially for unvaccinated, according to the World Health Organization. The Omicron variant of the COVID-19 is dangerous. And especially so far, those who have not been vaccinated against the disease, the World Health Organization is saying. The WHO said that a huge global spike in cases was being driven by Omicron, but insisted there should be no surrender to the variant of concern. You see that while the uh, Omicron causes less severe disease than Delta, it remains a dangerous virus, particularly for those who are unvaccinated. He says, we mustn't allow this virus a free ride or wave the white flag, especially when so many people around the, uh, around the world um, remains unvaccinated. In Africa, over 85% of people are yet to receive a single dose of vaccine. He says we can't end the acute phase of the pandemic unless we close that gap. Yikes. You understand? So, and that is why I'm concerned that all the booster shots that are going around the place, um, whether or not we can facilitate, not, and when I say we, not Grenada per se, but countries that have sufficient and have hesitancy can find a way to facilitate those who are in need. Because there are many a times that we are in need and people come to our aid. So whose aid are we coming to? And again, I'm not just speaking about Grenada per se, but as a region. Yes, family, I'd like to take a quick break, drink some water and come back on the program. When we come back, we'll have for you the national report. We'll have for you the weather and hopefully our new COVID-19 dashboard. Bringing you 
gifts of love we share at the communal. This Christmas, we are your Santa. It's all about sharing the warmth of this season with those you love. Getting on this special loan, taking advantage of great interest rates with no principal payments until January 2022. Share the gift of love. Make it a merrier Christmas with the communal. Exciting prizes for members throughout the promotion. For we are your Santa this Christmas. Offer ends January 31st, 2022. Lending terms and conditions apply. Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store now has amazing deals, special discounted prices on wedding sets, watches and selected jewelry. We sell top brand jewelry and watches like Citizen, Guess and Klein and G-Shock all at the best prices in Grenada. We also buy scrap gold and offer the best deals and customer service on the island. Opening hours Mondays to Saturdays 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store. Located at the Esplanade Mall, St. George's, Grenada. Visit our brand new remodeled store or call us on telephone number 414-3114-232-1234 or WhatsApp 533-1581. Sale is on for a limited time only. only. Running low on groceries? Why not visit realvalueiga.com and experience our new online shopping platform. Place your order, then go out and enjoy your day to spend more time with friends and family. Free delivery available within select locations or in-store pickup available. Sounds simple, right? It is. Stress less? Live more with Real Value IGA Online Store, where good food begins. Rich, smooth, delicious, and packed with vitamins, that could only be one thing. It's a Rika Almond Beverage. Great on its own are a lovely addition to smoothies. So call Superb Distributors on 435-2948 or visit us at Tempe St. George's today. Remember, Rika is life and life is Rika. The Housing Authority offers products that people can choose from, products that people can access, and I think anyone looking to build, just call the Housing Authority of Grenada. The service was um, superb. Every step of the way, they collaborated with the owner, they collaborated with the builder. The builder himself was really good. For what I've seen them do, I have to say that from buildings they have done in the past to where they are now, they have come up to speed with modern trends, modern designs, and I think I will advise anybody to choose the Housing Authority of Grenada. What does it take to be an amazing woman? Lots of me time. Amazing women are classy, fancy, and a little sassy. It's the drink for me. Cheers! Sometimes you've got to show them who's boss. Alpha male? Nah, alpha females are more amazing. Cheers to secure in the bag. We make time for ourselves, for work, friends, and we certainly make time for passion. We're simply amazing. Amazing cream liqueur for the amazing woman in you. We enjoy the luxury of a quality water supply. But it can come to this. Have adequate storage. Welcome to Yogo. Most of you know us for our food delivery service and our food pass for free delivery from restaurants. But did you know you can also use us for grocery deliveries too? We've just added another 5,000 plus new items to Yogo Supermarket and stay updated as we add more products and vendors. Yogo Services is our convenient skip the line offering. Let us pay your electric, water, and other utility bills for you. With us, you'll be able to buy tickets, pay your rent, schedule bookings, and other services. Need a ride to get somewhere? Give Yogo Lyft a try. 
Select your pickup location and destination location and wait for our driver to collect you. Never have to worry about how you're going to get to a place again. Please see website or app for our service locations. And sign up now. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell says restrictions will only be imposed if the COVID-19 situation worsens. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Wednesday, January 12th, I am Rikisha St. Louis. Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell says even with the current COVID-19 situation in the country, restrictions will only be imposed when they become absolutely necessary in the interest of protecting lives and livelihood. During a press conference which was broadcast live on GIS on Wednesday, Dr. Mitchell said it is difficult for government to impose restrictions when many are already suffering as a result of the pandemic. In December, government lifted the major nightly curfew, which had been in effect for months. Dr. Mitchell assured that if the country records more deaths or a continuous rise in cases, more severe measures will be implemented. This present situation has provided, Mikey, a lot of social problems for people at all levels in the society. I've heard statements made by some family members that older members have in fact become become psychologically, psychologically affected by the fact that they have to remain in a house on times they should be more out doing things that they're accustomed to doing. And some of them are passed away because of the limitation of that, that, um, that outside experiences and so on. So we have to deal with the consequences of restrictions and on, this, on the society as a whole. If we got into a situation like what we had when Delta occurred, and we start seeing more hospitalization, more deaths, then, as, then as certainly it will call for some, some other actions that we have not been ta taking at this particular time. To date, the Ministry of Health has recorded 2,551 active cases, 329 of which were recorded on Tuesday. There are 64 new recoveries. The effect that the absence of physical learning has on children from disadvantaged families remains a sore point for Grenada's Prime Minister. And while he is concerned about reported cases among teachers of both primary and secondary schools, the Prime Minister hinted that unless there is a major crisis, school will reopen guided by health protocols. I'm in the category of those who said, it, unless we have crisis, a major crisis, school presence is absolutely necessary. What we have to do is do what we all that we can to protect our children, protect our teachers. During his regular media engagement on Wednesday, Dr. Mitchell said although government can contract substitute teachers in the interim if there is a mass infection, the ministry will be forced to return to virtual teaching and learning which interface with the, the student's ability to socially interact with their peers. If we have a mass infection, I don't see how you will be able to have that amount of substitute teachers to deal with physical presence in the classroom. So it means that we may have to go back to, if it reaches a point of crisis, to, to, to virtual teaching again. And I, I must say this, this is a very painful thing for me personally. I, I feel it for those young people going having, the, you remember we used to have this little school parties, 
right? And you meet your little girlfriends and so on. When you you want to get a shake hand, you love that. You know, I, this this is hard for kids. It's tough. He called on teachers to take personal responsibility for their health and safety and that of their students. Every person and certainly every teacher has to accept personal responsibility, Mikey, for his own health. And, and therefore, teachers being vaccinated um, is, is clearly something that, that has to happen. Um, similarly, the, the students will have from the, with the parent support have to obey protocols as best as possible because you can get the virus, one, by certainly not observing the protocol and exposing yourself. And, 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 and you prevent major medical problems by vaccinating. So it seems to me that ha that message must continue. Last week, the Ministry of Education announced that schools will operate adhering to the six-feet physical distancing protocol. Students and teachers are required to wear a mask and sanitize or wash hands frequently. The Ministry of Education also said a further update will be provided on Friday, January 14th. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. Dante! Tonga! All right, that big man, I say, moving out, they moving out. I took my best shot to keep the radar moving. Drive out, they move. A message from the Ministry of Health. Welcome back. Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sean Charles calls on Grenadians to make critical lifestyle changes to adapt to the new reality of living with COVID-19. He said with the virus being endemic, there may never be a time when Grenada or the world will record zero cases and as such, life must go on. Dr. Charles was responding to concerns during the government's weekly post-cabinet briefing about the reopening of schools and the effect a further spread of the virus can have on the education sector. He said this lifestyle change will make it easier for school life to return to normal. It is possible that this disease is always going to be circulating at some level uh, in the population. And we must accept this. But at the same time, we know that what we are asking persons to do is to change, make lifestyle changes. And we know change is, change is one of the most difficult things to accept. But unfortunately, this is the, this is the new normal. We expect that persons in the education sector will quickly adapt to the new reality all right because it is here and it cannot be ignored and at the same time the education of our children as well cannot be ignored any any further dr charles said the health and business sectors have adapted and are both improving even in the midst of the pandemic right, the business sector has adapted many businesses were closed earlier on in covid no Everyone is doing everything in their power to ensure that they keep their doors open. All right? So this is what we expect for education now. This is just the most recent sector that needs to adapt to the new reality that we are living, that we, that we are living in. All right? That is the only way we, we will all be able to, you know, thrive in this, in, in this country. Finally, in the news, the first cohort of families will receive the keys to their housing units by the end of March under the Chinese Low Income Housing Project. That's according to Minister for Social Development and Housing, Honorable Delma Thomas. These units are part of Phase 2 of the Grenada China Project, which upon completion will see 647 housing units handed over to families in St. Patrick's and David Karyaku, St. Mark and Bushiju. Minister Thomas, who was a guest on the GIS Year in Review program said before the units are handed over, inspection and other minor work which were delayed because of the pandemic must be completed. Four of the six units have already been completed. After the completion 
we will first have the handing over ceremony from the People's Republic of China. So we will have to inspect and have the Ministry of Works and everybody to ensure that what we accept is of the standard. I mean, we have been inspecting before, but we want to make sure that all the utilities are working properly. We, we know that we had some challenges before, and so we provided more oversight this time to ensure that some of the issues that we had before do not repeat itself. And so we will have a handing over ceremony from the Chinese where they will hand over after all inspection from their side. And we will deal with in terms of the um, housing authority finalizing maybe the first set of families to move in those houses. That story just ended the national report for Wednesday, January 12th, recapping the top story. Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell says restrictions will only be imposed if the COVID-19 situation worsens. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Rikisha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time. All right, Rikisha and the rest of the uh, GIS news team well there um there's not going to be any um covid 19 update on the program tonight because we have not yet um received that information um as customary we will share that with you once we get it um we will share it with you on the whatsapp um platform um in our groups uh, we, we have found that to be very effective so if you are a, a viewer who wants to receive the dashboard as soon as we get it um, like some of the other viewers who, who often do, um, what you need to do is to send us a message for 149995. Sorry, we will send you that link. So send us a message for 149995. We will send you that link. And once you get that link, what you do is you just click on it and then it adds you and that's it. So then once you're ready for it, once we have the updates for you, then we send it to you. You get it instantly. Here's your <coughs> weather report for tonight. Uh, the weather is expected to be, apart, apart from the isolated trade wind shower, generally fair. Now, tonight's minimum temperature is expected to be about 24 degrees Celsius. Winds east, not easterly to easterly at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Seas slight to moderate waves 3 to 5 feet in open waters. Tides are expected to be high at 1.10 a.m. tonight. Now, for Thursday, the weather is expected to be generally fair and breezy becoming partly cloudy at times with the isolated trade wind showers possible sun is expected to rise at around 6 uh, 32 and set at 6 p.m the maximum temperature for tomorrow 30 degrees celsius the minimum 24 degrees celsius all right um, what else we can tell you about the weather for tomorrow well in terms of the winds east north easterly to east south easterly at 14 to 24 miles per hour Seas slight to moderate waves, three to five feet in open waters. And so um, that's it for now. And uh, we, we trust that all will be well with you and your family. May God bless you. May God keep you and your family. We want to say hello to all the folks who are currently on YouTube. All right, so um, we have Velma John, we have Glenn, Nora, we have Marina, um, Kalist, and uh, all the other folks who are there um, watching via YouTube. Good night to you, whatever time of the day it is in your area. And of course, um, we also would like to say hello to the folks who are currently tuned in on uh, Facebook. So we have like Ezra, we have Anne, we have Michelle, we have Mishi, we have Kirin, uh, we have Brenda. Um, we have Michelle, we have Angel, we have Samantha, um, we have Ansha, we have um, Delian, De we have uh, um, Margaret, uh, and everyone else really. Blessings to you, Denise. Watch, me and that tonight and in the morning. It is tonight. 1 a.m. is tonight. Okay? Come and tell me about in the morning. About in the morning. Mikey, one name is not tonight. What's in the middle of the night? What if 12 is 12 is midnight? No? 12 is midnight. You wanna go? You wanna go there with me? Let's go. 12 is midnight. Since when you know the middle of something is the end of something. So if 12 is midnight, how 1201 could be the end? Or how could 12 
um, 12 o'clock, one second after 12 o'clock, be the end of the night if 12 o'clock was just the middle of the night. Midnight is midnight. Midnight is the middle of the night. The dawning of a new day um, is morning. Okay? The dawning of a new day is morning. That's me. You understand? The people who think that we're bright enough to say this and to say that, they, that's them. So we're bright enough now, knowing what we know and rationalizing how we can rationalize now, given all the exposure and information that we have, even if they don't formally make the changes, we know what is making sense and what's not making sense. If 12 o'clock is midnight, then 12, then one second plus 12 cannot be the start of nothing. It's so 12 midnight. 12 or one is a new day. Morning is at the dawn. I don't talk. You understand? Because the new day starts with a clock going up to 12, 12 midnight. And one second after that, eh, they say that's a new day. But in terms of the morning, when was I get right? We don't like it, that it is. Then, if that is not making sense, if that theory is not making sense, then the theory that 12 is midnight ain't making sense either. You understand? What does midnight mean? And that's just basic. What does midnight mean? Eh? Look ya. Yeah, no. So anyway, don't come here with that. <laughs> eh? Abigail and uh, Kirin and and uh, Teresa. Um, uh, who else is with us? Shomin and and. Yeah, yeah, Kirin says the time changes from p.m. to a.m., but it's still night. Exactly. I know they come and tell me, and yeah, I stand in the morning laughing at us. Say, watch, they have it right in front of them, and because somebody tell them it's something, they keep it that way for decades, for centuries, not decades, centuries. Michelle, Theresa, Alistair, Denise. Oh, it is morning. I'll go stay there and take all the thing with Dennis. Dennis, you, Dennis, what what do you reference for that in for? To, what are you referencing for that fact? Because I also gave you an argument. If a man tell you, if a man tell you one and one is eleven, or if somebody tells you, no, let me let's make it more. If somebody tells you, one plus one is eleven. Eh? If somebody tells you one plus one is eleven. But you see that when you do the math, because one plus one is a mathematical equation, that you are not that when you plus do one point one as a one plus one as a mathematical equation, you get two. How could somebody tell you otherwise? What would be their justification? Because somebody says it. So then, as they don't say in school, show me how you arrived at that. What's your workout? How do you just then give justification? I gave justification for and for my answer. Give justification for yours. You don't just tell me is that and is that. What is your justification? How did you arrive at that? I am using their own evidence to support my argument. What do you have to support your argument? I. Sylvina, Celine. Kelly, <laughs> oh God. Let, uh, let me stop that. It's seven in the night. It's too late for that. Take care, <laughs> all and all the family. Blessings, mom and everyone, my family as well. Meryl and all of them. Let me see if I get the dashboard. Sometimes I just hope with a little lingering in the end, the dashboard will have time coming because I know sometimes as soon as I go, he come. So send me the message if you're not yet on the group. All right, four one four nine 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 five. And we'll sort you out. We'll sort you out. Um, Marlene. Um, Nova, yes, um, who else is there, uh, who else? so let's go, Gabriella and Elinad, blessings to you, Eudine, have a good night too, all right? Ezra and Teresa. 
Uh, what is one say? No, Tuesday, as you know now. Um, 11.59, the end, 12, began. So when is midnight? 9 o'clock then. Because if the night ends at 12, I mean, if the night ends at... Alright, so final, final subject. If the night ends at 12, so then how still could 12 be midnight? Then midnight will have to be 9. Hmm? Anyway, although I know time for that, yeah? Let's go. In five, four, three, two, one. We all say, yeah! No! Take care.